Many people know that great old hymn, Amazing Grace, and they love to sing it. It's an old, old hymn, and yet it's been recorded even in recent times by people like Elvis Presley and her own Canadian Anne Murray. What a lot of people don't know, however, is the story of the hymn and the man who wrote it. Here's my wife, Lynn Samways Hiltz, to tell you that story. A long time ago, slavery was common. People living in different countries were taken from their homes and forced to work long hours under difficult conditions without ever receiving any payment for their work. The people who kidnapped them are called slave traders, and they would get a lot of money by selling the people they kidnapped. Slavery is very wrong, and it makes God sad because God knows that all people should be free. But many did not understand this. They thought the slaves did not have feelings like them because they appeared to be different. Every day, ships full of these people would arrive and they would have to begin their harsh lives as slaves. It would take the actions of many to stop the injustice from occurring. One of the people who changed the world of slavery was a man named John Newton. John Newton was born in a small town in England in 1725. His father was a sailor. Hey, my father was a sailor. Anyway, John Newton's father was a sailor and he spent a good deal of his days on long voyages. His mother was a good Christian woman who devoted most of her time to John's spiritual education. She taught him from the Bible, from hymns and poems. Unfortunately, she was very ill. And when John was only six years old, his mother joined God in heaven. Soon after his mother passed away, John's father decided to bring him aboard his ship and teach him the life of a sailor. John really enjoyed life at sea, but he found he was interested in the ways of some of the bolder sailors who later proved to be a very bad influence on him. John loved his mother and missed her, but he began to forget everything she had taught him. As he got older, he began to lose his way. He would curse and lie and gamble. Worse, he began to denounce the Word of God. He said he didn't believe in God's love or forgiveness. He said he didn't believe he would be punished for his wrongdoings. Even the bolder sailors were shocked by this. Over the years, John did many bad things, but the worst thing he ever did was captain a slave ship. Many years went by, and John continued to be wicked and a wretch until one day his life changed. While sailing his ship, the Greyhound, on the Atlantic Ocean, John noticed a gathering of dark clouds in the distance. He tried to steer his ship away from them, but soon he and his crew were battling a fierce storm. The ship began to fill with water, and he and the sailors frantically tried to pitch the water back into the ocean with buckets. But the storm raged on and on, and the ship began to fill faster and faster. Everyone was certain that the boat would sink. Just when he thought all was lost, John cried, God have mercy on us. John didn't know why he did it, but he recognized it as a miracle when the boat stayed afloat and he realized it was his great deliverance. John chose to follow a path that would bring him closer to God. As he studied the Lord's teachings, he started to remember what his mother had taught him. He became very ashamed and guilty of his past. It took several years before John left the sea 
and his life as a sailor. He took up becoming a rector in St. Mary Woolnorth in London and devoted the rest of his life to teaching against slavery. Some say John learned the melody for Amazing Grace from the slaves on his ship all those years ago. Wherever he came up with the tune, John never forgot that he was once the captain of a slave ship. He wrote Amazing Grace to remind himself and others of the salvation of God's grace. John continued to speak out against slavery until his death. He and the people he inspired worked so hard and in 1807, slavery was abolished in the British Empire. <laughs>